Hello students and welcome back to bankexamstudy.com. My name is Ramandeep Singh. On 2nd of July, PNBS, so credit officer exam is going to be held and today we have prepared a power capsule, right? So around 150 questions are there, uh, 150 plus questions are there in this power capsule. And I recommend all of you to go through this power capsule, right? We are going to find a lot of questions from this power capsule, right? So content here, this is a question bank. This is a, uh, this is a question bank, not a concept based uh, capsule this is a question bank okay so just go through this question bank bilkul help karega isme se kafi questions aapko exam mein dekhne ko milenge my name is ramandeep singh and i've been teaching on bank exam today from last 10 years so this is my whatsapp number you can ask your doubts here okay so pnbs so uh, credit officer uh, crash course is available on bank exam today.com at a very affordable price of triple nine only so you can uh, check the description to join the course it's a complete course with the video classes, the power capsule, the test series, everything is available in the course. Please check the description uh, for the link. Let's start. Which of the following statement about capital budgeting is incorrect? Basics of capital budgeting, NPV ka method samajna hai, profitability index, thoda sa apko understanding honi zaruri hai. So it evaluates the profitability uh, of an investment opportunity, which is correct. The entire process is based upon assumptions, which is also correct. Okay, two projects are project A, project B. Which one you should do based upon the cash flows. The process calculates all the factors for entire life cycle. It's correct. Only for large expenses, it is false. For large expenses, it is a very subjective thing. Who can say that for you, large expense is 1 lakh rupees, for me, it is 10 lakh or for a crore. So that's a subjective thing. So it, it is used to decide whether the company should invest in a, in a project or not. Project A may invest karna hai ke nahi karna hai. Ye decision lene ke liye capital budgeting ka use hota hai. Thik hai? So uh, which is the correct chronological order of steps involved in capital budgeting? It starts with the, aap sabse pehle opportunity hi identify karoge. Phir aap project ka evaluation karoge, then investment selection, project implementation, then the performance review. Hai? So selection se pehle evaluation hoga, please remember that. Which of the following statement is true regarding the sunk cost? What is a sunk cost? Let me just hide myself so that you can focus. So what is a sunk cost? Uh, so sunk cost, it is an expense uh, which cannot be recovered. It is an expense which cannot be recovered. Khatam ho gaya wo, hai? Which of the following is the condition that is considered suitable for investment while using PI profitability index. So profitability index should be more than one. Uh, so it is profitable. If it is more than one, it is profitable. It is less than one. It is loss making thing. So net, it is a very important question asked in the previous papers. The NPV is a difference between dash investment and dash value of all dash tax free cash flows. Which one is correct? NPV is the difference between initial investment and present value of future cash tax free cash flows, right? Initial investment, jo total aapko cash flows aane hai after year 1, year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, total maan lo 5 saal ka project hai. So, har saal ek ek lakh rupi aane hai, uski present value, right? Thik hai? Uh, future present value of all, that is the concept of capital budgeting, na? Aap future cash flows ki present value nikalte ho, thik hai? Which one of the following is correct? Definition of crossover rate. So what is the crossover rate? The rate at which net present value of two projects are equal. So two projects are project A and project B. Dono ki NPV net present value same hai. It is very difficult at that point of time. So crossover rate, a unique concept. Kam hi padhte hain log. Lekin from MCQ's objective paper examination point of view it is very important mcq exams ke liye aise concepts bade important hai unique hote hain log kam hi padhte hain to paper mein aane ke chance zyada rehte hain so documentation ka ek bahut important sa topic hai isme se kafi questions har saal aate hain paper mein uh, which section of uh, indian registration act prescribes a penalty for falsely impersonating another person so it is section 82 according to section 82 please remember this section it is very important Indian Registration Act ke according up 
इम्पर्सनेट करते हो अपना नाम गलत बताते हो ठीक है तो डाट इज अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन एटी टू उस पर एक फाइन हो सकता है एंड इम्प्रिजनमेंट अप टू सेवन ईयर्स राइट फाइन भी लग सकता है और बोथ कैन भी देर अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन ट्वेंटी थ्री ऑफ रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट इंडियन रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट हाउ मेनी मंथस ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स रिक्वायर्ड रजिस्ट्रेशन मस्ट बी प्रजेंटेड फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन सो चार महीने के अंदर अंदर यू हैव टू प्रजेंट योर डॉक्यूमेंट फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन जिसकी ज़रूरत है जिस डॉक्यूमेंट जैसे कि एक विल है दैट हैज़ टू बी रजिस्टर्ड विद इन फोर मंथ यू हैव टू प्रजेंट इट प्रजेंट करना ज़रूरी है फॉर रजिस्ट्रेशन ठीक है अकॉर्डिंग टू सेक्शन ट्वेंटी सिक्स यहाँ पर सेक्शन याद करना ज़रूरी नहीं है ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ इंडियन रजिस्ट्रेशन एक्ट हाउ मैनी मंथस ऑफ डॉक्यूमेंट्स एग्जीक्यूटेड आउटसाइड इंडिया इंडिया से बाहर एग्जीक्यूट हुए हैं लेकिन इंडिया में रजिस्टर कराना जरूरी है विद इन हाउ मैनी मंथस फ्राम द डेट ऑफ अराइवल इन इंडिया विद इन फोर मंथ फ्राम द डेट डॉक्यूमेंट्स इंडिया में अराइव हो गए हैं विद इन फोर मंथस फ्राम द अराइवल दे शुड बी रजिस्टर्ड ओके एंड अकॉर्डिंग टू इंडियन स्टैम्प एक्ट पूरा स्टैम्प एक्ट पढ़ने की जरूरत नहीं है डॉक्यूमेंटेशन वाला चैप्टर पढ़े बैंक एग्जाम स्टूडे में सो दैट वुड बी मोर दैन सफिशियंट इन योर कॉस विद इन हाउ मेनी मंथस द इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स विच आर एग्जीक्यूटेड आउटसाइड इंडिया मे बी स्टैम्प विद इन थ्री मंथस विद इन थ्री मंथस स्टैम्पिंग हो सकती है रजिस्ट्रेशन एंड स्टैम्पिंग आर डिफरेंट थिंग्स स्टैम्पिंग आप थ्री मंथस में कर सकते हो रजिस्ट्रेशन फोर मंथस में कर सकते हो अ मॉर्गेज क्रिएटेड ऑन फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी ट्वेंटी थर्टीन इज इन्फोर्सबल अप टू फर्स्ट ऑफ जनवरी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी फाइव सो लिमिटेशन एक्ट इज देयर प्लीज रीड इट टेक अ स्क्रीन शॉट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू फॉर एग्जाम्पल आप एक प्रोमिजरी नोट है राइट अगर तीन साल तक आप अपनी पेमेंट डिमांड नहीं करते नोटिस नहीं भेजते विद इन थ्री मंथस थ्री ईयर सॉरी उसके बाद यू कैन नॉट मेक क्लेम्स उसके बाद कोई क्लेम नहीं किया जा सकता ठीक है सो सिमिलरली बिल ऑफ एक्सचेंज इट्स थ्री ईयर्स अगेन टर्म लोन अग्रीमेंट थ्री ईयर्स मॉर्गेज इट्स ट्वेल्व ईयर्स Uh, and then letter of guarantee it's थ्री years from the date uh, of determining the determination of guarantee foreclosure by mortgagee it's थर्टी years execution of decree ट्वेल्व years recovery of loss caused by fraud थ्री years from the date of detection of fraud appeal to high court against the judgment of lower court नाइन्टी days from the date of decree in other courts it's थर्टी days money paid by oversight in excess आपके account में excess पैसे आ गए हैं गलती से Within three years of the date of discovery of mistake, you need to file the claim. Claim, okay? A demand promissory note is executed on first of January twenty thirteen. It is valid up to which date? A demand promissory note is executed on first of January twenty thirteen. It is valid up to first of January twenty sixteen. So because three years are valid. Hai. Security documents are obtained in bank loan for the purpose of what? For the purpose of creation of evidence of uh, having given a loan under Evidence Act. Purpose क्या है security document का creation of evidence not that important. A limited company can stand guarantee provided by there is a resolution passed in the board for this purpose. ठीक है ऐसा नहीं है कि MD ने जाके sign कर दिया then company is liable. There should be a proper resolution passed by the board. The legal hire of the uh, deceased borrowers can be liable up to how much? Up to the value of assets inherited. जितना पैसा मिला है, उतने तक ही they are liable. ठीक है. Under Section 17 of Indian Registration Act 1908, which of the following documents are required to be compulsorily registered? So all these documents, uh, the will, a uh, non-testamentary uh, instruments, lease of immovable property. instrument of gift um, uh, um, or um, immovable property all these documents should be registered okay and which of the following are eligible to be offered offered as commercial papers kon kon commercial paper offer kar sakta hai corporates primary dealers all india financial institutions and to issue commercial papers what is the minimum tangible net worth of the company it's 4 crores as of the moment and what is the minimum credit rating required that is a2 What is the minimum maturity period of commercial papers? Seven days. Maximum one year. What is the minimum denomination for which CP can be issued? It's five lakhs. Okay. IBC me which among the following are uh, not core services rendered by an information utility? Information utilities in me se kya service nahi provide karta? 
resolving dispute is not a service provided by an information utility because it's an information utility resolve karna dispute ko unka kaam nahi hai theek hai which uh, which of the following is the minimum amount of default required for initiating cir cirp corporate insolvency resolution procedure isko initiate karne ke liye minimum 1 crore ka default zaruri hai agar isse kam hai to pre package wala karenge theek hai which of the following entities are eligible to initiate cirp uh isme फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर ऑपरेशनल क्रेडिटर्स और द कॉर्पोरेट डेटर इट सेल्फ कैन इनिशिएट सी आई आर पी ओके सो देर इज अ डिफरेंस बिटवीन सी आई आर पी एंड पी पी आई आर पी दैट्स रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट अ कोर्स में इसको पढ़ लें बहुत जरूरी है विच आर द फॉलोइंग स्टेटमेंट इज करेक्ट रिगार्डिंग द ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ अलॉटीज अंडर रियल इस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट्स इट्स अलॉटीज आर कंसिडर्ड एज फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर जो अलॉटीज हैं अलॉटीज आर कंसिडर्ड एज फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स जिन्होंने रियल इस्टेट प्रोजेक्ट्स में इन्वेस्ट किया हुआ है दे आर फाइनेंशियल क्रेडिटर्स ओके विच आर द फॉलोइंग अथॉरिटीज हैज़ पावर टू एक्सटेंड द डेड लाइन फॉर कंप्लीशन ऑफ सी आई आर पी बियॉन्ड थ्री थर्टी डेज नन ऑफ द अबव राइट सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द आई बी सी द डेड लाइन फॉर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ द सी आई आर पी इज थ्री थर्टी डेज सो विच इंक्लूडिंग इंक्लूड्स यू नो एनी एक्सटेंशन ओके so this deadline can only be extended by supreme court of india according to article 142 of indian constitution so only supreme court can extend it no high court no nclt nclat koi bhi extend nahi kar sakta only supreme court can do that the ibc has adopted which model uh, creditor in control model okay a creditor can initiate pre packaged insolvency resolution process if the default is more than 10 lakhs but up to 1 crore 10 lakh to 1 cr tak agar hai default then the pp irp pre package insolvency resolution process initiate hoga there is a difference between cirp and pp irp that's really really important please go through kare usko who regulates the insolvency professionals ibbi waise karta hai insolvency and bankruptcy board of india the powers of board of directors of a company undergoing corporate insolvency resolution process is exercised by the resolution pro professional theek hai the resolution professional takes over the assets of the company from the board of directors who among the following has the highest priority in distribution of sales uh, sale proceeds of the assets the workmen or the employees of the company they'll get the priority before the creditors which of the following financial service providers have not undergone the corporate insolvency resolution process yes bank new hai divan srei reliance capital they have undergone the uh, the cirp okay a committee of creditors is comprised of all financial creditors and no individual shall be enrolled as a professional member if he is not eligible to be registered as an insolvency professional with the ibbi Uh, within how many days a liquidator shall distribute the proceeds from the realization from the date of receipts of amount to the stakeholders kitne din mein baantna hai within 90 days he has to do that so irc norms pe chalte hain when an asset becomes non performing what does that mean what do you mean by non performing assets when it fails to generate any income for the bank so that's a non performing asset i've a bank ki kisht deni band kar di so that's that becomes a non performing asset for the bank in how many categories banks are required to classify their non performing assets within three categories sub standard assets doubtful assets and loss assets theek hai so if an npa uh, an asset is classified as sub standard if it remains an npa for a period less than 12 months so if it is more than 12 months it is doubtful so how if क्या उस एसेट को लॉस में कंसिडर करना है दैट इज अप टू द यू नो विल ऑफ द बैंक ओके सो थ्री कैटेगरीज ऑफ एनपीए प्लीज रिमेंबर दैट दैट्स रियली रियली इंपॉर्टेंट सब स्टैंडर्ड डाउटफुल एंड लॉस एसेट्स ठीक है सो इफ एन एसेट इज अनकलेक्टेबल उसको मार्क कर दिया देन इट इज अ लॉस एसेट ठीक है थ्री कैटेगरीज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट प्लीज रिमेंबर एडवांसेज अगेंस्ट द टर्म डिपॉजिट एन एस सीज आई वी पी किसान विकास पत्र लाइफ पॉलिसीज विल नॉट बी ट्रीटेड एज एन पी ए बिकॉज आप उसको कभी भी इन कैश कर सकते हो दैट इज ट्रू लोन अगेंस्ट एन एन एस सी आई वी पी किसान विकास पत्र लाइफ पॉलिसी वो कभी भी एन पी ए नहीं होते नेट एन पी ए इज इक्वल टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट 
gross NPA minus all the provisions, URI plus any credit balance unadjusted. That is the uh, definition of N net NPA. U uh, URI is unrealized interest pertaining to the preceding years. In August 1991, a high level committee was set up to examine the various aspects of financial system. It was headed by M Narasimham, right? Which committee recommended the bank should adopt uniform accounting practices in regard to the income recognition and bad debt provisioning. So that committee was headed by Narasimham only. On which basis the income is recognized on perf uh, performing assets? It is on the basis of accrual. Accrual basis pe recognize kar hai. If a bank is not able to recover the interest on installment from a term loan borrower for more than 90 days, then on which basis the income should be recognized? Then it should be recognized on the basis of actual receipt. Agar uh, receipt nahi ho raha term loan mein for more than 90 days, then it is actual receipt. Before that, it is accrual basis. So if the loan is not bad, then on the accrual basis and if, if the payment has not been accepted, then on actual basis, right? So very important question. Ye wala question bahut important tha. What is the desirable provision coverage ratio for NPAs? That is 70% is a desirable provision coverage ratio. Okay. So which is uh, provision coverage ratio is provisions divided by gross NPA the desired is 70%. A bill purchased discounted account should be treated as non-performing asset if the bill <coughs> remains overdue and unpaid for a period of 90 days. So after 90 days, it becomes NPA. When the balance outstanding in a cash credit account, CC account remains in excess of its drawing power for five days, the account is out of order. If the balance outstanding in a CC account remains in excess of its drawing power, jitna nikal sakte to, zyada nikal liya, panch din ke liye, it is out of order, right? So that account would be treated as out of order. I have taught the IRAC norms in detail. 30 minute ka video hai in the course. Please check it. In case of overdraft CC accounts, which concept is applied? Out of order concept is applied. NPA wala concept nahi apply hota, out of order apply hota hai CC or overdraft ke cases mein. A dairy loan account becomes NPA when the installments of principal or interest therein remains overdue for a period of 90 days. So harvesting season wala dairy mein implement nahi hota hai, theek hai? So the definition of NPA, please check it, very important. Uh, the simple concept interest or the principal overdue for more than 90 days, it, it becomes NPA. Out of order ka concept hai, theek hai? So detail mein karwaya hua hai, out of order ka account remains uh, out of order. Uh, detail concept hai. Next slides mein kariyega. The bill remains overdue for a period of more than 90 days. In case of agricultural loans, uh, in case of uh, short cro duration crops for two crop seasons, the loan is undue. And then uh, for long duration crops, the loan is due for one crop season. The amount of liquidity facility remains outstanding. <clears throat> so the amount of liquidity facility remains outstanding for more than 90 days. And in respect of derivative transaction, the overdues are there for more than 90 days and it is a NP account. Please check this one out of order ka concept is very, very important. Okay. So when does a term loan becomes an NPA? when interest or the installments of the principal remains overdue for a more than a period of 90 days and it becomes an NPA. Okay. In a loan account where principal or the interest is overdue for a period of 30 days an account has been showing signs of incipient stress, then it will be classified as the SMA zero. So instead of waiting for 90 days, in case of big loans, the RBA's guidelines for the SMA special mention account is there. After the 30 days, pehli default pay hi, it is an SMA. So uh, if the principal or interest payment uh, not overdue for more than 30 days, it is SMA zero. If it is overdue between 31 to 60 days, it is SMA 1. So if it is overdue for more than 61 days, but less than 90 days, it is SMA 2. So please remember that that is also very, very important, but important concept. Hai. 
in case of cc accounts if the interest of principal is not serviced for 90 days then it is an out of order account cc account mein npa wala concept nahi hai out of order wala concept hai out of order status that i told you ki next slides mein karte hain this is the one you can take the screenshot so an account should be treated as out of order if if the outstanding balance remains continuously in excess of the sanction limit for more than 90 days this lucky limit hai 11 lakh rupaye nikalwaye hue hain for last 90 days it becomes out of order aapki jo limit hai aap usse excess mein withdraw kar rahe ho continuously for 90 days then your account is out of order second condition in case where outstanding balance in principal operating account is less than the sanction drawing power but there are no credits uh, see, आपकी 10 लाख रुपए की लिमिट है, ठीक है? And then आपने उसमें से सिर्फ 2 लाख रुपए निकलवाए हैं, ठीक है? लिमिट से कम निकलवाए हैं, but in your account there is no credit, there is no credit in last 90 days. Last 90 days में आपने अपने CC account में कोई credit नहीं किया, कोई पैसे नहीं डाले. So in that case you become out of order. If the credits in your account are not enough to cover the interest debited. राइट right? आपने उस अकाउंट में क्रेडिट उतना नहीं किया जो इंटरेस्ट को कवर कर सके देन दैट अकाउंट बिकम्स आउट ऑफ ऑर्डर दीस आर द थ्री कंडीशन आफ्टर व्हिच एन अकाउंट कैन बिकम आउट ऑफ ऑर्डर अकाउंट एन एग्रीकल्चरल अकाउंट बिकम्स एनपीए व्हेन द इंस्टॉलमेंट ऑफ प्रिंसिपल और इंटरेस्ट देयरइन रिमेंस ओवरड्यू फॉर वन क्रॉप सीजन इन केस ऑफ लॉन्ग ड्यूरेशन क्रॉप्स एंड टू क्रॉप सीजन फॉर शॉर्ट ड्यूरेशन क्रॉप्स and uh, a cash credit account shows cred uh, credits amounts to 50,000 over last two months. Interest debits are debited during the period amount to 1,65,000. The account is out of order. The account is out of order. Okay. Because the amount, the credit you have that is not able to cover the interest. Interest ko bhi cover nahi kar pa rahe. A term loan is treated as NPA. If interest or installment of period remains overdue for more than 90 days okay for advances under consortium agreements how will you arrive at nba status based on the record of recovery of individual member bank they are going to you know a member up apne tarike se karenge Her, uh, each bank is going to check the status themselves which of the following advances will not be treated as nba provided adequate margin is available to the account uh, advances against term deposit uh, or advances against national savings certificate Kisan Vikas Patra and Indra Vikas Patra in these cases the accounts will not be treated as NBA because the bank can sell off these assets okay a project loan sanctioned on 1st of uh, January 2018 for 30 crores with the moratorium on payment of interest and installment for 15 months become NPA in absence of any repayment of interest or installment on 1st of July 2019 okay so the provisioning requirement for unsecured doubtful asset is 100% for unsecured doubtful assets the provisioning requirement is 100% very very important okay the asset would be classified as doubtful if it remains substandard for 12 months if it remains substandard for 12 months it becomes doubtful after that uh, after this category it becomes loss asset banks are allowed to include general this is an rb circular very important banks are allowed to include general provisioning on standard assets floating provisions provisions held for country exposures investment reserve account total of these exposures can be 1.25 percent of tier 2 capital okay <clears throat> up to a maximum 1.25% of the total risk weighted assets. The PCR provisioning coverage ratio is the ratio of provisioning to gross NPA. And that's for all for today's student rest of the questions are available in the power capsule student. That's part of the course you you need to take the course to go through rest of the questions very important questions you will find those questions in your exam. It's available in PNB uh, SO Credit Officer Crash Course and the Crash Course is available at a discounted price of 999 only. Rupees 999 only, that's available in the course. Uh, link is available in the description. You'll be getting the entire syllabus coverage in the Crash Course with the help of video classes, notes, quizzes and proper test series is also there. 
Link is available in the description. In case of any doubt, you can ask your doubts here on 9067201000. A list of our successful students who took our courses in the past and they cracked their respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. You can be one of them. In 2021, PNBSO credit officer, all these students that took our course and they cracked their respective exams. I'm really, really happy for them. So that's all for uh, today, guys. And if there is any doubt in your mind, please ask your doubts and we are going to answer your doubts. So thank you and have a very nice day. Bye-bye.